Welcome back to the Secret Life of Servos. This is the What is a PWM Signal episode. So we'll be digging deep into what a PWM signal really is, what does it mean, what does it do. So um, first I want to point out that PWM signals can be used in the world of motor controllers to adjust the amount of power going to a motor, but today we'll be talking about PWM signals as a signal carrier to control a servo and, and how that works. This signal that we're talking about is essentially a coded message that gets sent along a line to go to a servo, and that servo is able to decode the message and respond accordingly. A little like Morse code, basically you have a signal that's going high and low, on and off, and the amount of time that it's on or off uh, has meaning assigned to it. So if you actually looked at the signal on an oscilloscope, what you'd see is a square wave. And within a given period of time, how long the signal is high or on is going to basically tell the servo everything it needs to know about where to go and how quickly to get there. Now when the signal is high, that's referred to as the pulse, hence the name pulse width modulation, because it's adjusting the width or duration of that pulse. In fact, sometimes it's referred to as PDM, pulse duration modulation, although PWM, pulse width modulation, is much more common. The width of the pulse is measured in a unit of time, and since that signal is a fairly high frequency, we use microseconds. A uh, typical range within the RC market is 1,000 to 2,000 microseconds, and outside of the hobby market, a lot of times you'll find a 600 to 2,400 signal, so a, a much wider signal to get a little more range out of your servo. So you have a signal, and it's being sent to you in your servo or some other device that's reading a PWM signal. You need to know how often to check for changes on that signal. So the amount of time in between each check is the period. So one period um, will have one high and one low, and it's going to be the, the window of time that something reading that signal is going to pay attention to. Within the hobby market, that pulse happens 50 times a second, which equates to a 20 millisecond period. So you'll commonly see 50 hertz among uh, some circles in the world of uh, Raspberry Pis, for example. Instead of seeing uh, microseconds or period, you'll see duty cycle and frequency. So 20 milliseconds is equivalent to 50 times a second, second aka 50 hertz. Um, and then the duty cycle is just within that period, the percentage of time that the signal's high versus low. And in the hobby market, the high versus low is gonna be five to 10% if we're talking about that 1,000 to 2,000 microsecond signal. Since it's purely carrying the signal and not actually driving the motor inside of the servo, the PWM signal is not going to draw much current. What that means to me is no matter what servo I select for my project, whether it's a brushless monster torque servo or a sub-micro servo, the amount of current that that line is going to draw is somewhat minimal. Uh, all your current is going to be on your positive wire going to the servo. Similarly, um, the PWM signal itself is going to be safe to connect directly to your Raspberry Pi with a servo hat or an Arduino because um, it's going to be well under the current draw maximum of those pins, which is typically around 40 milliamps. Although you will want to take note that the positive red line going to the servo is going to power the motor of the servo and that you want connected to something that can output the current like a battery. The voltage of this pulse is typically 5 volts within the hobby market and it is commonly regulated down um, due to the fact that within the hobby market you may be running a 2S LiPo or some battery that has a higher voltage than 5 volts. So you don't want to pass all that voltage on to the serv servo through the signal line. Similar to the voltage signal is the pulse amplitude. And most of the time within the world of servos, these are one and the same. Um, so you might have a 5 volt uh, signal voltage and a 5 volt pulse amplitude. The distinction is the pulse amplitude is the change from the low to the high in the signal. So if, you're, if you went from one volt to six volts, that would still be a five volt pulse amplitude. Since the crux of the communication is the width of the pulse, we've developed the PWM meter to show you in microseconds exactly what your pulse width is. This is going to be 
incredibly helpful if you're trying to troubleshoot your project and figure out if the signal that you think you're sending is what you're actually sending. Within the tech side, one of the most common issues that comes up within servos is somebody stating their servo is not rotating far enough or it's rotating a different amount than what they thought. Um, a lot of that comes down to what signal that they're sending to the servo. Uh, a servo is going to rotate further, obviously, if you send a wider signal. And so one of the first questions I'm going to ask when trying to troubleshoot is, what is your signal range? Um, without knowing that signal range, I really can't tell you if the servo is operating properly. So that's where this PWM monitor comes in handy. Well, you could use an oscilloscope to find the same information. That's going to be a lot more expensive, take a lot more space, and require a lot more training. Uh, in contrast, the PWM meter is compact, cheap, and just couldn't be simpler to use. All you need to do is plug in a lead coming from your signal source, and optionally, uh, you can plug in another servo lead to pass that signal onto a servo. If you guys have any questions about this, send us an email at tech at servocity.com.